<coughs> we will uh, we are reading the book Saints of Raja by Kapoor Baba <laughs> about uh, Sri Jagannath Das Babaji. Do I remember this is Jagannath Das Babaji, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Gorkishar Das Babaji, this Jagannath ba yes, Das Babaji? Yes, yeah. this Jagannath Das Babaji. Mm. Basket. Basket Baba. Basket Baba. The famous Basket Baba that carried Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Before Bihari, mm. to Vidanga and for to read Bengali, Rad. by his desire. Yes. So, Mystic Yogi. <laughs> no, Mystic. Yeah, the well known Jagannathas Babaji. So, we continue. <coughs> Baba, se uh, page 78, middle, pa middle. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Baba. <laughs> was self-willed to such an extent that at times he treated even the deities he worshipped as he liked <coughs> the people of Surya Kund had made a cottage for him. But Baba wanted to serve Gauranitai. So people also made a temple for the deities. <coughs> Bihari brought two beautiful images of Gauranitai from Bengal. They were nicely installed in the temple. <coughs> the images were made of brass and glittered like gold. One night, some robbers came while Baba was doing bhajan. They said, Baba, we are robbers. You must give us all that you possess. Baba answered, what do I possess? <laughs> I'm only a servant. The masters, my masters are in the temple. You go to them. So the robbers entered the temple. They were overjoyed to see the images because they thought the images were made of gold. Of Bihari. Bihari. I do not feel happy with that. Get me an image of heart from somewhere. Bihari brought an image of six armed Mahaprabhu from Dinu Babaji, a Manipuri Vaishnava who lived Banshidas Baba of Navadvip, took his deities, Gauranitai, to task for what he considered to be their convenience in the theft of the two pots in which he used to cook for them separately. Baba became very angry at them and said, uh, you conspired, he said to deities, you conspired with the thieves because the theft was committed in your presence. How could the thieves steal without your permission? 
you must therefore suffer for your misdeed. You will not get anything to eat until the pots are brought back. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. So, both Gora and Nitai have, have to go without food that day. Baba also had to go without food, for he, he ate only the prasada of Gornitai. <laughs> Next day, Nitai felt very much disturbed. Next day. So it's about, yeah. So perhaps not so much because he had to remain hungry, but because he could not see Baba remaining hungry because of his fault, Nitai's fault. Perhaps Nitai's disturbance brought about a similar disturbance in the mind of the thieves, in whose share had fallen the pot, in which Nitai's food used to be cooked. He quietly came with the pot, and kept it in Baba's cottage. Banshida said to Gora, Gora, this is Nitai's pot. So he will get his food today. But you not. If you want to eat, you must also bring your pot back. Baba would always do what he said. So he cooked for Nitai, gave him to eat. <laughs> While Nitai was eating, Gora was simply watching with a long face. <laughs> How long could Gora tolerate this? <clears throat> Ultimately, by his wish, or prompting the second thief, or prompting, the second thief also brought back the second pot. Then Banshi ba does Baba cooked for Gora as well. <laughs> it may be that Jagannath's Baba had uh, sent Gora Nitai from his temple because he thought they had, they had invited the robbers and created disturbance in his bhajan. But then, what offense had the six-armed Mahaprabhu committed to deserve to be sent away? Baba alone knows about it. The ways of saints, who have relished, realized the Lord, are no less instructable than the ways of the Lord himself. <laughs> My God. Easy to understand the God ways than saints ways. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Yeah, it's very sweet. Hmm. Once Baba said to Bihari, Bihari, 
Let's go to Navadvi. When, Baba? When? Just now. <coughs> right now. Bihari lifted Baba on his shoulders and started. As he lifted Baba, he felt as if he was lifting a heavy stone. But soon after, he began to feel as if he was carrying the thin piece of cloth on his shoulders. A thin piece? Of, just piece of cloth. At first, lifting up the stone, mm -hmm. then after some time, like, like chadar or something. <laughs> Amazing if you know Vrindavan and Navadvi, but how many kilo? How many what weeks? <laughs> Months. <laughs> oh my god. Uh -huh. From Vrindavan to Navadvi. <laughs> Walking all the distance of on foot. My God, Bihari reached Navadvi within nine days. Uh -oh. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad for a uh, Olympic, uh, like Olympic uh, fast, quick walker. <laughs> oh my God! Who can say whether this was? Due to the miraculous power of Baba or the devotion of Biharidas to his guru. <laughs> when Bihari was passing through the forest of Bhagalapur, he suddenly stopped and began. To turn back, Baba asked, What's the matter, Bihari? And Bihari replied in low voice, There is a lion sitting in front of us. But Baba commanded, No, no, not the lion, the companion of Mahaprabhu, who has come. To greet you. <laughs> As Baba said this, the lion looked at Baba and disappeared in forest. <laughs> the last time Baba went to Navadvip, <clears throat> he decided never to return to Vrindavan. The news spread all over Vraj that Baba was leaving Vrindavan for good. Nilamani Prabhu, Radikanta Prabhu and other Vaishnavas, Pandits and Brajabasis starting coming to pursue him not to go. They asked him, Baba, why are you leaving Vrindavan? You are so old. The question brought about a sudden change in Baba. His eyes filled with tears. His body trembled. And the hairs of the body stood on ends. He replied in a voice choked with emotions. I'm leaving because I want to pass the last days of my life in Navadvip at the lotus feet. Of Gora Nitai. 
I am a lowly person. I do not know how many offenses I have committed. Gornitai of Navadvip are more merciful than Krishna of Vrindavan. They just neglect the offenses of the jiva and they give him a loving embrace and accept him as their parshada, companion or servant. Mm. On way to Navadvip, Baba stopped and at Ambika Kalna to meet his old friend and god brother, the great saint Bhagavan Das Babaji of Kalna. The scene of their meeting was unique. Never had the persons who were present at the meeting see such a scene before. On seeing each other, both the saints were so filled with joy that they clasped, they clasped each other and interlocked in each other's loving embrace, begin to roll on the ground in a fit of emotion. This continued for hours. Both seem to be in Samadhi. It appeared that their samadhi would never break. Radhe Radhe. Radhe. Anaka. Yes. Radhe. They are going to speak more loudly. We cannot ah. uh, uh -huh. hear. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. okay, I will try. I will try like this. <clears throat> so this continued for hours. Both seemed to be in samadhi, and it appeared that the samadhi would never break. There was nothing unnatural about it, because it was not a meeting between two ordinary persons, but the meeting of hearts, between two devotees who had realized Krishna and whose hearts were, were overflowing with Krishna Prema. Prema is so powerful that it makes not only the devotees, but even Krishna rock and roll <laughs> and dance in ecstasy. <laughs> it says rock and roll. Rock and roll. <laughs> Oh, I'm rock and roll. It's old expression, like the rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> the disciples of two saints, however, became very anxious. Vishnu Das Baba, the foremost disciple of Bhagavan Das, said to Bihari, it is now 11 p.m. 
we must do something to bring them back to consciousness. Jagannath Das Baba must be very tired and hungry after his long journey. He must have something to eat. Bihari said, yes, Baba has not had eaten a morsel of food for the last three days. As he said this, he lifted Jagannath Das Baba in his lap and began to massage his chest. After some time, Baba regained consciousness. Looking at Bihari, he said, Bihari, have you taken food? How can I, Baba? until you have eaten? You have not yet taken anything and it is now 11 o'clock at night. Night? No, no. It's evening. Everyone laughed. Baba stayed with B Bhagavan Das Baba for 10 days and then went to Navadvip. <clears throat> On reaching Navadvip, Bihari asked, Baba, in which ashram would you like to stay? Any ashram in Navadvip would have gladly welcomed Baba. But, Baba said, I will not go to any ashram. I would like to stay under a tree. So, he stayed under a tree. After some time, Bihari, with the help of Sri Kedaranath, Datta, known as Bhaktivinoda Thakur, purchased a piece of land near the tree <laughs> and built two attached cottages on it. Later, three here said Pucha cottages were built and a boundary wall erected around them by Sri Vanamali Rai Bahadur of Taras. Baba lived here for 32 years. He left the body at the age of 147. <clears throat> there was a Kali Kadamba tree in Baba's ashram under which he used to sit for meditation and chant Hare Krishna. After Baba's disappearance, the tree began to dry up and its bark fell off. On its naked body appeared the words Hare Krishna, which, though not very distinct, could be easily read. Four or five days before Baba left the body, he said to Bihari, Bihari, 
you have rendered so much service to me. But I have not yet been able to do anything for you. Today, I will give you four or five heart loads of wealth. Cards, cart loads of wealth. Bihari said, Well said, Baba. You do not have anything except broken karava, earthen vessel for keeping water. <laughs> broken. <laughs> <laughs> and you will give me cart loads of wealth. Oh, Bihari, you don't understand. I will ask Mahaprabhu, and he will easily arrange. <laughs> oh my God. But you let me know whether you want me, whether you want me or wealth. Bihari very quickly replied, I want you not well. Baba was happy to hear this. He said, very good, Bihari. By choosing me, you will have me. Not well. <laughs> At the same time, you will not have to suffer from want of anything. You will live for a hundred years, always chant Harinam, Kali, will not be able to do any harm to you. <coughs> And you will be blessed with the vision, Gora Nitai. <laughs> Nothing is known about the early life of Jagannath Das Baba, except that he had taken Diksha from Jagad, Shri Jagadananda, Jagadananda Goswami of Sringarvat of Vrindavan and Vaishnava Sanyas from Sida Shri Krishna Das Baba of Govardhan. <coughs> Baba had a large number of disciples. Some, the, some disciples, <coughs> some of whom became Siddha. <coughs> Among his Siddha disciples, the names of the following may be mentioned. Shri Bihari Das Babaji, Shri Bhagavan Das Babaji, Shri Gaurahari Das Babaji of Navadvip, Shri Rama Hari Das Babaji of Vrindavan, Shri Nityananda Das Babaji of Barsana, Shri Krishna Das Babaji of Kadamba Kandi, Baba used to give valuable advice to the sadhakas. For instance, he said, You must avoid the company of women or the company of a man who keeps the company of a woman or even the company of men who is in any way associated with the person keeping the company of a woman. 
second. If you want to, to real, realize the supreme end, you must repeat Harinam regularly and steadfastly. Regularity is important. It should be maintained even at the cost of one's life. Third, <clears throat> you should not forget Gora, for he is even more benevolent and merciful than Krishna. Krishna is just is like just like a ruler who takes into account your offenses in his administration of justice. Gora does not take into account your offenses. While Krishna is interested more in in dispensation of justice, <laughs> Gora is interested more in dispensation of mercy. And isn't it interesting why that is like that? Jai Ho, Dandavat. <laughs> <laughs> this is only this is only because Mahaprabhu is in the path of Swamini and Swamini is the ocean of compassion. So therefore mm -hmm. Mahaprabhu is more merciful than the Lord. So beautiful. Radhe. <laughs> From this point of view. Gora Kirtan also is more useful than Krishna Kirtan. <laughs> rather, rather. Same reason. Same reason. <laughs> same reason. <laughs> Gora Kirtan may be, for example, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shrivas Adi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. For example, <laughs> it may be like this also. Fourth advice from Baba yeah. Krishna is avatar of Dvapara and Gaura is avatar of Kali. We should sing the name and the hymns of the avatar in whose age we live. Just as we sing the praises of the king in whose kingdom we live. <laughs> <laughs> so and what was so what did Mahaprabhu what was this wonderful what did he bring this new king in, in, in Kali Yuga? This is Manjari Bhav Sadhana. This is what we all aspire for. This is the this is what the kings present to us in this <coughs> age. Therefore we we are so fortunate. And for me it's interesting, it's not Kali Yuga because Kali is not the king of Sadhana. <laughs> it's Gora. Gora Dam Gurudev. Jayo. Would anyone else like to? Yeah. You know, I, I. This Saban, Pasna Saban of Bihari. 
actually really amazing. Because, you know, Gurudev say, oh, now I want to go to Navadvip. Yes, Baba, when? Now. Then Bihari immediately, you know, carry Baba and walking on foot. We cannot, you know, nowadays nobody can do. He's not very heavy. <laughs> yeah, still, you know, still, they, even 30 kg, 40 kg, still, you know, to for, yeah. for thousand kilo and yeah. um, on foot and nine day in, impossible. And also like a food also, you know, sometimes the Baba does not, Guru Dev does not take food three days and disciple also cannot take three days for us, <laughs> impossible. And uh, this very beautiful Baba asking, you know, last uh, a few days ago, <laughs> so I want to give some wealth, you know. And uh, do you want to, do you want to have wealth and me? I just remember in Mahabharata, uh, before uh, I think Kurukshetra's war, Krishna went to see Duryodhana. So no, I don't want to personally, you know, join this war. So, but uh, my my army, I can give you. So what do you want? Me and army. Mm. And then Duryodhana said, yes, I'll take your army. And then uh, he went to, I think, Yudhisthira and also Arjun. So, what do you want to take my army and myself? Yes, of course, we take you. So, and this Bihari is a personal servant. He said, no, I don't want to anywhere else. I need you. I want to you. I want you. Then the result, he became Siddha. So if, if he say, yes, Baba, I will take wealth, then he may not, he may not to become Siddha. We don't know, you know, but, uh, but I feel like this. Yes, this is, this is Kuru Nishta, Maharaj. This is Kuru Nishta. Yes, exactly. And the, by the mercy of, you know, Siddha Baba, you know, Jagannath Baba Maharaj Mas, Biharji become also Siddha Mahal. So this is, we could learn how servant <laughs> behave with the day and how Bihari had the face, total face on the mm. you know, But it's clear from the way it's being told that it's, we're not talking about uh, material wealth, the four carts of gold. It's spiritual wealth that he holds. That's what he can offer. So it's much more favorable to have accepted that offer than the than the other, even though it was just a broken, what did you say, a broken clay pot? Huh? Especially this gold, gold kanaka. This Kariuga very, very dangerous. Mm. Because <coughs> in Bhagatam first can't mention Maharaj Parikshi want to, you know, kill or, you know, he does not want to carry, stay in this world, but carry back. No, my Kariuga start. I need some place to stay. So please give me some place to stay. And then he said, okay, I can give you four places. <laughs> Four illicit thing is happening that place you can say, like uh, meat eating, illicit sex, gambling, and in taking intoxication. And then plus, he said, someone who has gold, if some gold, also you can, you know, you can stay in that place. So therefore, this is, uh, 
you know, you know, some wealth, especially gold, is be- very dangerous unless we fix a mind the service of Sri Radha and Mohan. If someone who is fixed and any amount of ma- you know, money, where is, is no problem. But uh, if <laughs> we have material mind and material ego, this where is disturbed. As this is a very interesting <laughs> point. <Yeah. clears throat> so, next uh, is chapter 10. Shri Gora Kishora Shiromani. Shri Gora Kishora Shiromani's mother in law was a chaste lady when her husband died. She expressed the desire to enter the fire, perform sati. Her relatives try to, how to say, yeah, this, this odd, it's old word, this odd her by telling her about the pain and the torture and uh, discourage her, like that uh, torture a sati has to suffer then she dipped her finger in ghee and put it on flame of a lamp. The finger began to burn like firewood. She showed the finger to her relatives and said, see? how it burns but it does not give me any pain then after circumambulating seven times the burning pile on which her husband's body was laid She jumped into it. Even today, the place <coughs> near Gushkara station in Vardamana district, where she became Sati, is known as Sati. Danga. Danga. Before jumping Sati, I'm oh, sorry, uh, before jumping into the burning pile, she said to her people, when my daughter Ramadasi comes of age, you marry her to Gora Chandra Shiromani, the son of Dana Krishna Chatopadaya of village Chitahati, Chitahati in Tahsila Katoya. <laughs> Just to mm. have some you know, explanation. Many people may not know Sati. Mm. Sati is like a <coughs> so may not to know Sati. So Sati is like a kind of uh, 
Yeah, like sati is like if husband die at that time, you know, husband dead body, you know, we burn out. At that time, sati means to follow husband and to enter the fire. That show wife's chastity, chastity. But as if spiritually thinking, uh, I don't know spiritual or not, but uh, like a chaste lady always together with the husband. So he want to go with the husband. That kind of system, it was uh, prominent, maybe until 18th or 19th century. But uh, nowadays, government forbade. But uh, like now, nowadays, husband wife is always like a separate thinking. But uh, Vedic time or, or even, you know, hundred years ago or a few hundred years ago. At that time, like a wife and so obedient and chaste that the chaste wife follows the husband. It's not <coughs> false, but naturally she want to go. But uh, nowadays, it's like a material speaking, or oh, this is a kind of another kind of committing suicide. So therefore, government to stop it. <clears throat> but this is kind of representing kind of chastity. So and uh, she want to follow the sati system. S this is, you know, some, some information. Sorry, maybe we don't need this information, but uh, if we know, you know, it may be help. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> At that time, Ramadasi, the daughter, was one and a half years old, and Gorachandra was a young boy who went about seeing theatrical performance and had little to do with reading or writing. Obviously, Ramadas's mother had by her supernatural power seen in Gora Chandra a Siddha saint in process, in progress, in making. <clears throat> Yeah, Sida in oh. process. Actually, I understood he will be Sida. Yeah, yeah, he will become. Ramadasi was married to him when she came to proper age. <clears throat> up, to the, up to the age of 20, Gora Chandra had not even learned alphabets. <laughs> one day, one of his neighbors said, Gora, it seems you will remain illiterate and a disgra disgrace to your family. From that very day, Gora Chandra becomes, became restless for learning. After uh, learning the basics of the Bengali language from some pandit, he went to Katoya and joined the Tola Sanskrit school of Panchanana. Tarkaratna, 
later, he learned all the Bhakti Shastras from Sakichandra Das Pandit Baba of Katoya and became famous as a Pandit, well versed in the Shastras. He began to live in Natya Mandir of Mahaprabhu's temple in Katoya and started teaching. Gorachandra also took Diksha Mantra from Siddha Sri Chaitanya Das Baba of Navadvip and started, and started Bhajan. From early morning till two o'clock in the afternoon, he spent his time in Kirtan, Nama Japa, and Lila Chintana, meditation on Lila. After that, he cleaned the path to Ganga and the place which was used by the Vaishnavas as urinal. Then he bathed in Ganga, went to Mahaprabhu's temple for darshan, made obeisances to the Goswamis and Vaishnavas assembled in the temple and took a particle of their prasad, thrown in a pit outside the temple. As for his meal, he boiled four handfuls of rice, added a little salt to it, and ate after offering it to Mahaprabhu. In the evening, he taught Srimad Bhagavatam and other Shastras to students. Once commenting on the Janmadhyasya Shloka of Srimad Bhagavatam, in an assembly of the great Vaishnava Pandits of Kataya, Sri Romani Mahashaya spoke for 35 days. And his explanation was throughout in support of the concept of Sri Goranga and his philosophy. The pandits, with one voice, acclaimed him king of the pandits of Katoya and surrounding area. The Tantrika Pandits of Kagram, of Murshi Dabada, Murshi Dabada district got jealous of him. They invited him to Kagram for Bhagavat Pata, Bhagavat Pata, with a view to humiliate him, intention to humiliate him. The path was arranged near the Vishnu temple of Kagram. On the third day of the path, the pandits arranged for Pashubali, animal sacrifice for Kali Puja, instead of part at, at the same place where part was held. After Kali Puja, when they began the sacrifice, every time they had to strike the animal with a sword twice. This was so evil.
In this way, they tried to satisfy the goddess at night. The goddess told the Pujari in dream. You have insulted a Vishnu Bhakta. I shall kill you now. The Tantrika Pandits were so afraid. They went to Shiromani Mahasha, apologized for their misdeed, and requested him to do something to save them. Shiromani Mahasaya asked them to go and bathe in Ganga and chant Harinam, and the Pandits obeyed. They bathed in Ganga and pleased the Goddess but by taking initiation in Harinam from Shiromani Mahasaya. Mm. After some time, Shiromani Mahasaya went to Vrindavan and began to live in a house near Keshigat, which even today is known as Shiromani Kunja. In Vrindavan, he used to teach Bhagavat to the Vaishnavas in the afternoon. <clears throat> An old Vaishnava, whom no one knew, came to attend the Bhagavad path every day, just when the path began, and went away immediately after the path, without giving any opportunity to anyone to inquire who he was and where he came from. But he listened to the path with utmost attention. One day, when Shiromani Mahashaya was describing the Daksha Yagya mentioned in the fourth canto of Bhagavatam, one Vaishnava asked, <coughs> How could Sati? burn her body by yogic power. Before Shiromani Mahashaya could say anything in reply, the old Vaishnava, who never spoke a word, said, Do you want to hear? or to see how she did it. The other Vaishnava said, Who would like to hear if he can see? The old Vaishnava then said, All right, see. He sat, cross-legged, facing the north, and said, Jai Gaur, and began to meditate. After a little time, after a little while, fire blazed out of his great toes. Slowly, it began to spread all over his body. Oh, what a tragedy! The Vaishnavas tried to extinguish the fire by pouring water, by, but they could not stop the flames, and the body of the old Vaishnava was soon reduced to ashes. We have said before that in Vraj, many Siddha Mahatmas 
who left their physical body hundreds of years before still live there in their spiritual body and help remove the doubts and difficulties of the sadakas. <clears throat> the old Vaishnava might have been one of them. <laughs> Shiromani Mahashaya bowed down to everyone, considering him to be superior to him in devotion. It was difficult to walk alone uh, along with him on the road because he would bow down to every pilgrim <laughs> who came to Vrindavan. When anyone asked him why he bowed to the pilgrims, he replied, you don't know. Your devotion to Vrindavan has become still because of your nearness to it. There is little enthusiasm or zest in it, but these people live in far-off places. Some came from East Bengal, some from Gujarat, Maharashtra, Madras, or Multauna, in spite of all the trouble and tribulation they have to suffer on the way, their, their yearning and enthusiasm for Vrindavan are much more adorable. So my head naturally bows down to them. Well, you, you told the other day you told me about this uh, from Narayan Maharaj how he expressed his attitude towards devotees in who perform bhajan here and for, perform try to perform their bhajan in the West. Could you share? Nadiradi Andakaji asked me to share one. Remembrance of Shunaranga Samaraj. One Shunaranga Samaraj told, when I see how, how Indian devotees in India, oh, anyway, any devotees in India doing bhajan, I'm very happy. But then I see how devotees doing bhajan in Western countries, just trying, not doing, trying to do bhajan, they purchased my heart. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Run, run. Mm. So, of course, I don't know why Narayan Maharaj said like this. Mm. Because to, to, to attain Raga Bhakti, what we needed? Raga Bhakti can attain strong greed. So, this it seems for, for me, I feel the Shiromani Mahashaya is appreciating their greediness. Like, especially now, Kartik time, all over the India, people visit, will visit Brindavan. But uh, in India, Honestly speaking, more easy. But uh, if some other country, like Rosh, you know, Russia, like uh, uh, still some war is maybe some going on, maybe you know, or Ukraine, or uh, you know, Europe, Japan, Japan America, and South even South America. America. 
Sometimes South American people say it takes more than 24 hours to come here. Maybe five years to collect. And five years to collect money. So that means how they are enthusiastic, how much greed they have. Some rich country may be more easier. Like some country who is very poor, they must wait some years to come. Mm. So that greediness is, uh, is uh, very much, we, ha we have to appreciate and we, we also pay respect. So Nara Maharaj was similarly thinking because Actually, this material body, it doesn't matter who is, you know, Indian, who is American, who is European, who is Asian or South American. Because it is a Krishna or Gorama, Goranga Mahaprabhu, uh, it distribute to, to the devotee, his devotee all over the world, some or other. And because body is, you know, body is nothing to do with soul. Of course, someone who is in India or someone who beyond in Vrindavan, it's so much, you know, they, they can take advantage of their birth. But uh, someone who is born West, and East and other country, uh, sometimes, or actually very difficult. Like even Japan or even, you know, outside of India or outside of Vrindavan, mm -hmm. will they you say, you know, here, yoga maya is prevalent. Mm -hmm. So the more easy to do bhajan. But Western country is outside of India, it's not so easy. Honestly, Mahamaya is. Mahama is very strong and, and then still devotees try to, you know, struggle, have greed and to do, you know, to do some seva. It is so much, you know, that kind of appreciate. We could appreciate. Baba one time, Yuka Kishore, he one time asked Baba because many Many devotees in the Western world, like you said, were not able or cannot come to Vrindavan. So we all know that the most powerful item of Bhajan is to be in the Holy Dham and to stay in Prachadam and Radhakun. This is no doubt. This is no discussion. Without this, nothing is really possible. But Baba said also one, one very hopeful and one very nice advice. So for those who cannot go there, um, we should all see that the whole universe, the whole world is the kingdom of Radha. So wherever there is love and wherever there is Swamini's compassion, there is also the possibility to attain perfection. That, that doesn't mean as an excuse, I don't have to go to Brindavan. This is not what I'm saying. This is not, but as a hope to see the consciousness, <laughs> the consciousness is very important. Rupa Goswami is saying, if you cannot live there, in the body, you can live there in the mind. So therefore, it is very important to always, every morning, to imagine yourself, if you cannot go to Brindavan or Radhakund, I always try to imagine to sit down at the holy lake at Radhakund, even if I'm bodily not there, I try to go there with the mind. And this is also very powerful. So there is always hope if we see the whole world if this is a big if, this is consciousness, you know, if we see the world not as the material, Srila Gurdjieff always says there is no material world, we just have to see it correctly. And if we see everything as, as Swamini's kingdom and Swamini's place, Baba said Swamini's kingdom is the whole universe. Where is bath, where is love, there is always hope. This I find, I found very, very sweet and very nice. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. <coughs> uh, we read Bhagavad Gita with Udoji. Udoji actually read. Uh, nine chapter, uh, verse 
32 and 33. Shilukan Samrapada, written in commentary to 32, what this word is temporal and miserable. But at the end of commentary to 33, he is written, who is taking shelter of Srimati Radhika, for him, word is blissful. <laughs> Then, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> we continue. Or done? Just five minutes more. So. Oh. No, we just keep it. Like no, yeah, it, it, yeah. Huh? It can go. Go on. It's okay. What do you like? Yeah, I want to, I want to hear a little bit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. Shiromani Mahashaya, as far as possible, never allowed anyone to do dandavat to him. Anyone who desired to do dandavat to him found Mahashaya lying prostrate at his feet even before he made obeisance to him. I can, I, if I may share one very, very nice story. I was at, I was at Radakund one time. Uh, when I, last time I was there, I was four days at, at Radakund, where Baba was still alive. This was 2014, I think, or seven, 17. For, it was 14, 14, I think. And uh, I was there, and in the morning I would go to Radakund and sit down and and I even took baths sometimes, and then I sat there and I was chanting, and I was watching one particular human being taking bath. And the sun was there, and it was very, very mysterious and very mystical. And I was thinking, my God, who is this person? It looks like it looks like Narutam Das Thakur is taking bath, you know? Very, very beautiful, no care in the world. And then he 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 was under the water, I could only see his head and his face. And I was thinking, I know this person. I know this person. This, this is Vaishnava Patas Babaji, one of the senior disciples of my Gurudev. Now, very, very learned person. He was, he was, I was, I was amazed how, how beautiful that person was looking. And then he came out of the water and it, he was just wearing copin and he had no care in the world and he was, shining like the sun coming out of the water and i was thinking oh my god you must be vaishnava das but maharaj and i wanted to make dandavat to him and then he came out of the water and he he made dandavat to me and i was like oh my god and then i got one step up and i i was making dandavat again to him then he cut one step up and he made dandavat to me so he was never allowing anyone to touch his feet and not, and to make dandavat and he told me Never say Maharaj again. Never. I am not a Maharaj. I am a servant. And I was sitting there. I was like, what is going on? I was, I was amazed at the de display of such a hum humility, such a humble person. I was shocked. <coughs> you know, he never accepted any, you know, these steps of, uh, on Radha Kun. I always had to get one step higher to make Dandava to him, but he, could, he never allowed me to do it. This was unbelievable. I was so mesmerized. And then I was talking to him a little bit. And these people are not from this world. And like you said now that he was never allowing anyone to make Dandavat. He, he, he would not allow this. And then he said to me, okay, I have to go now. I mean, we Westerners, we go and we have nice prasadam. We go to wherever we want to go. We can eat in Mungia Mandi. We can go to, to the restaurant. But he said to me, I'm sorry, I have to go now. I have to pack Madukari. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my. I was like, this is, this is not from this world, you know. Then he left and he, he went to pack arms and food. Such a great, great soul. This I just came, came to my mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once, Sridhar, a disciple of Vijay Krishna Goswami, went to Shiromani Mahashaya 
for Darshan. Sri Romani was sleeping. And Sridhar performed Dandavat at his feet. As soon as Sridhar got up after performing Dandavat, he saw that Shiromani's Mahashaya, Shiromani Mahashaya's feet had automatically turned in another direction. Then Sridhar performed, turned in another direction. He performed Dandavat the second time. This time, he again saw that the feet of Shiromani had turned in another direction. In this way, he performed Dandavat three times, every time, from a different direction, according to direction of Shiromani's feet. And every time he found that sleeping Shiromani Mahashaya's feet had automatically turned to avoid his dandavat. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it for today. Thank you, everyone. Radha, Radha, Jai Shri Radha.